welcome to Baku in Azerbaijan, a great juxtaposition here between the new buildings that flame towers and here the old town dating back to the 11th and 12th century. Azerbaijan is said to be the first Islamic Republic in the world. So Azerbaijan, not normally a country on the top of people's tourist lists, not today anyway. But if you look back in history and grab a map, and you were a European trader or a North African trader and you're wanting to head to China to do some trade, there are basically two ways. You come across east and then you turn left at the Caspian Sea and you come up the east side of the Caspian Sea around Afghanistan and up through Tajikistan into India and China or you go the western side of the Caspian Sea and you come up through Azerbaijan. Hence, this place is so full of a lot of the historical architectural styles and stories that make this that made the silk route so great this is the maiden tower probably the most well-known landmark and building in baku in azerbaijan there is a lot of disagreement about what it is and when it was built some of the early foundations are dated back to about two and a half three thousand years old and some people say this was a fortress built in the 1200s some people say this was a temple and some people say this was an observatory i don't see the problem with it being all three i mean the top windows for example line up exactly with the winter equinox on the 22nd of december the sun shines straight through giving a very strong indication that it was built for some reason to do with the sun but then again it's got arrow slits and a lot of architectural similarities to a fortress so why can't it be all three some people say there's a legend that an old uh, lover of the Shah demanded that Shah build a tower for it another one is the daughter of the Shah fell in love with a commoner and wasn't allowed to marry him so she threw herself off into the sea below the sea used to be here because the Caspian rises and falls quite a lot but there's also another legend and that is fortresses that have never been conquered are often called maidens and this is a maiden tower or some people say it's a tower that militarily was never conquered ah, take your pick the maiden tower used to have the Caspian shore lapping up on its foundations but the Caspian is a sea that rises and falls in height quite frequently and no one fully understands why. Part is water use, part is evaporation, part now is climate change. And the interesting thing is this beautiful boulevard, forget the trucks, has been built in front of the Maiden Tower. And one just has to wonder with global warming if the Caspian rises again because it's at a traditionally pretty low point now, if the Caspian rises again. What's going to happen here? By the way, here's a fun fact for you. Baku, the capital here, is 28 metres below sea level. That makes it the only national capital in the world that's below sea level, and the largest city in the world that's below sea level. Or to go back to the Maiden Tower, it means only the top one metre of the Maiden Tower is above sea level. This is one of the old caravansaray, which is the old hotels from the Silk Road days. A little bit like a Caspar. We have four towers on each end and the central courtyard. And now they're restaurants. Hi, this is the entrance to the Shevan Shah's palace. The Shevan Shah's ruled Azerbaijan and the region from about the year 800 to around about the year 1600. They descended from the Yazidis and were often stuck in the Ottoman versus Persian walls. Right through Shervan Shah's palace, you get throwbacks and reminders to Persian architecture. All of this great sandstone initially was decorated with beautiful tiles and colours that you see around many temples still in Iran. But when the Soviets came and took over the place, they destroyed it all. Thanks, Vladimir. Even the graffiti here gives away part of the history. You've got some carved in Arabic, some in Greek, some in Persian, some in Cyrillic. Testament to the different peoples that have come through and vandalised the place over the years. 
When Azerbaijan got its independence in 1918, for those two years between 1918 and 1920 when the Soviets took over, Azerbaijan was actually the first ever Islamic Republic, Islamic Secular Republic in the world and the first majority Islamic country to have open universities. There you go. There's a feeling that's hard to describe. I walk around Baku and first impressions reading a bit of the history and seeing some of the architecture is this is a country that feels like it's a crossroads of cultures. They say this in the book but it actually feels that. You feel a little bit of Russian left over here. You feel a little bit of Arabic. You feel a little bit of Persian and you see that everywhere you go. The influence of Islam, the influence of the architecture, the influence of the history and you really understand why this was the crossroads of trade for so many centuries, bringing all of those cultures together that have all left a little mark here in Baku. I'm now in Gobastan outside Baku, a World Heritage protected area with rock art that dates back 15,000 years, making it one third as old as Australian rock art that goes back 45 to 50,000 years. No, 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 no. So this area of Gobastan uh, was once underwater and you can see this from the limestone but also the sedimentary rock. The Caspian Sea has gone up and down in its height over thousands of years with the last mini ice age about 14,000 years ago this being almost completely covered by water and only the hilltops are showing. Here we are outside Baku in Azerbaijan around some mud volcanoes. Did you know there are around about 300 mud volcanoes here in Azerbaijan, which is pretty cool because there are only 800 in the world. So more than a third of the world's mud volcanoes are here. It's a good sign of geological activity and well, there are earthquakes here, so we know that. But it's also apparently a good sign of oil and gas in the region. And we know there's lots of oil and gas. So come to this moonscape landscape outside Baku to 300 of the world's 800 mud volcanoes. The only place in the world I've been that's like this is uh, Iceland, which is also worth a visit. Apparently the mud that comes from these mud volcanoes has the same sort of healing medical qualities as volcanic water. I'm not going swimming in there. So much of the economy here is based on oil and gas and it's just bubbling up to the surface. I'm walking across ground here that is spongy based on the black ooze of oil coming up and where someone's been foolish enough to oh, drive their car I'm nearly falling into it and you can see the black oil and the rainbow colours across the water and the oil is just literally seeping up from deep underground. Well, not even that deep, actually. This is the central uh, altar of the Atashka temple, which to the Zoroastrian believers is like Mecca is to Islam. Atashka actually means house of fire. And a temple was built here because of the eternal flames that were originally fired by that natural gas seepage coming out of the ground and it was merchants traveling on the Silk Road that first discovered that here and word spread and a temple was built but unusually it was a temple that many people used fire worshippers used that the Zoroastrians used so a lot of religions cohabited here Hindus would often st stop here and also worship on their travels on the Silk Route now the Zoroastrians weren't fire worshippers as such, but they did venerate earth, wind, fire and water, the four elements. And the central uh, altar here at Ashtagar has four chimneys and each entrance facing the four cardinal directions. And the symbolism of four is very important. Now, what did the Zoroastrians actually believe in? Essentially, they believed in good thought, good word and good deeds and that there was the battle between the god of good, which was Mazda, and the god of evil. Now, have you ever thought about the old Paisley design? Paisley is named after the uh, village in Scotland where it was first weaved, but it's actually uh, the old fire worshipping symbol that was also taken by the Persians and taken by the Zoroastrians 
and you can still see that symbol right through Persian carpet weaving and Azari carpet weaving. So next time you wear your paisley tie, think that you're actually saying in your symbolism that you're a fire worshipper or a Zoroastrian. There is so much gas and oil here in uh, Azerbaijan. In some places it actually, the gas comes straight out of the ground. And this has been burning for many, many years. How long has this been burning for? 4,000 years. Apparently it's been burning for 4,000 years. You know, it kind of is very symbolic for Azerbaijan itself that you've got a mountain on the surface and then underneath you've got something completely different. It's a bit like the country itself. And what I mean by that is, on the surface you've got all of this development taking place in Baku, but you've got a lot of poor areas outside of Baku. Everything looks good on the surface. And then you start to scratch. You know, the president has been in power, inheriting it from his father, and his father has been in power from the end of the Soviet days. No elections, no democracy, no reform in that sense. And as one of my guides has said to me, there's a lot of corruption in this country. And there are very rich and there are very poor and not much in the middle. And when I asked him which is he, he said, well, his father is an army general. So you can guess which category he's in. And that's kind of one of the challenges for Azerbaijan. It looks on the surface to be very, very good, but I'm not quite sure when you scratch whether it's just one burning flame.